We don't usually cover the regular, unusual anomalies found by the countless amateur UFO investigators out there who are tirelessly combing the terrain in and around our neighboring planets, moons, and asteroids in a search for possible alien craft, artificial structures, or even ancient ruins. Although some of these formations can indeed be intriguing, they're often easily disregarded as mere natural formations. However, our next anomaly, we believe, could be seen as a considerable mystery. Since its launch on the 9th of March 2003, the probe explorer Hayabusa has completed several interplanetary flybys, traveling a total of 2 billion kilometers to arrive at an asteroid known as Itakawa, or more precisely, 25143 Itakawa, on September 12, 2005, successfully carrying out numerous scientific observations of the asteroid since then. However, what is astonishing regarding this new research is what has been found within these new images taken of our space-traveling neighbor. It seems, during its enormous orbital journey around the cosmos, it's picked up an unusual passenger. Clearly no normal space debris, this mysterious object, now perched or possibly impaled upon the front of the asteroid, looks for all the world like an artificial satellite. A huge, perfectly spherical object with three clearly distinct yet not too damaged legs or more likely receiver antenna protruding from the area which impacted the asteroid. It's resting upon the so-called Woomera Desert District of the Space Rock and was clearly not there the last time it was photographed. Could this object possibly be a satellite from an alien planet? Maybe still active? Did the asteroid have an extremely close call with a possible alien neighbor, avoiding an impact we would have never learnt of? Itakawa is a Mars crosser asteroid, and interestingly, it was the first asteroid to be the target of a sample return mission by a space-going nation, and is still the smallest asteroid ever photographed. It was discovered in 1998 by the Linear Project, and was given the provisional designation 1998 SF36. However, in August 2003, it was officially named after Hideo Itakawa, a Japanese rocket scientist. Maybe Hideo spotted something. The object it now carries is clearly not of normal formation. Not only does it not look natural, but displays a symmetrical design similar to those found within our own artificial objects, such as satellites. And due to this object being caught floating through space, just like our own satellites do, it's undoubtedly a very compelling anomalous object. Was this small asteroid chosen for the first major exploratory program above all other asteroids because the Japanese knew something we didn't? Just what could this object be? We just hope they explore it further, and whatever they discover, they share it with the world. When they land and the hatch opens, perhaps we will be looking at ourselves in the mirror. Many of you will be aware of the Interstellar Traveler, which visited our solar system from a galaxy far, far away a few years ago. Named Oumuamua, it is now recognized as the first known interstellar object ever successfully detected as it passed through our solar system. Formally designated 1-2017-U1, it was discovered on the 19th of October 2017 by Robert Work while using the Pan-STARRS telescope at the Haleakala Observatory within Hawaii. He spotted the mysterious object 40 days post-solar transit on the 9th of September that year. Many people have wondered about the true origins and indeed true identity of the object, yet few have received the backlash which Avi Loeb experienced on November of 2018 when he published a new research paper in an astrophysics journal. Scientists publish thousands of research papers every year. These papers will often attract little public attention. However, Loeb's latest work gained a suspiciously high level of controversy and rejection when he dared to cover the rather taboo subject within this so-called official field, aliens. The subject of the paper was the mysterious supposed space rock. He posits that it likely traveled for billions of years, past countless other stars before reaching our own. Eventually, it will cross the edge of our solar system and into interstellar space again. 
The leading hypothesis among astronomers is that Oumuamua is an odd-looking comet, a remnant of another solar system, kicked out by natural forces and sent barreling through the cosmos. Loeb, however, offered a rather different explanation. Quote, Oumuamua could be a probe, one deliberately sent to our solar system by an alien civilization. The detection of extraterrestrial beings, the most significant scientific discovery in human history, if we were ever told about such discoveries, of course, one must remember that as a civilization, many believe systems openly objective to the possibility of alien life, many of which are over a millennial old. The thought of finding sapient life beyond Earth, of learning that we are not alone, however, is the pursuit of countless individuals within the modern world. So it is no surprise that his opinions have been so widely debated. But additionally, there is seemingly another possible reason for why the paper was so widely reported on. This being the fact that Loeb is, in fact, a tenured Harvard professor within the astronomical department. Quote, if this was some random astronomer that you had never heard of from, say, Equatorial Guinea, you probably wouldn't write a story on it, says Brian Gensler, the director of the University of Toronto's Dunlap Institute for Astronomy and Astrophysics, and a former colleague of Loeb's at Harvard. He continued, There's a lot of astronomers that have outlandish ideas, and most of them aren't taken seriously by the community, and most of the time the media don't really give attention to them. End quote. Loeb has two decades worth of experience and is well regarded in the field. So, regardless of what others would like him to believe, his opinions matter. Was Oumuamua really an ancient alien's exploratory craft, one spying on ours and many other solar systems? If it is, it means we are indeed not alone. What's more, it means we have undoubtedly been found. So the professor's opinions, no matter how controversial, we find highly compelling. Dr. Hermann Oberth, who pioneered rocket design during World War II, once cryptically stated, quote, We cannot take the credit for our record advancement in certain scientific fields. We have been helped. When asked by whom, he replied, The people of other worlds. Additionally, according to Above Top Secret by Timothy Good and William Morrow, Oberth's fellow space pioneer, Werner von Braun, echoed this mysterious reference, even including the existence of extraterrestrials, when he stated in 1959, quote, We find ourselves faced by powers which are far stronger than hitherto assumed, and whose base is at present unknown to us. More I cannot say at present. We are now engaged in entering into closer contact with those powers, and within six or nine months' time, it may be possible to speak with more precision on the matter. End quote. Just who were the people of other worlds that Dr. Oberth spoke of? Or indeed, these entities that von Braun referred to? With only Oberth's quotations, one could presume a possible reverse engineering of alien craft. However, with von Braun's more detailed expose, this possibility seems to be excluded in favor of pertained actual assistance and contact with advanced beings. Many people also believe that an encounter with these beings, along with Third Reich craft built with their technology, was once encountered in an operation known as Operation High Jump. According to certain independent researchers, Richard E. Byrd, admiral of this operation, possibly encountered a hostile, formidable opponent, who he has claimed to have described as fighters that were able to fly from one pole to another with incredible speed. In reality, however, whatever Bird's expedition experienced may never be fully publicly disclosed, as all reports, including Bird's personal log entries, remain mysteriously classified. But the connections between these curious quotations, and indeed the rumored encounters by this classified operation, are certainly intriguing. Furthermore, Operation High Jump was originally organized by Secretary of the Navy James Forrestal. Interestingly, in 1949, Forrestal was sent to recover from a supposed nervous breakdown at Bethesda Naval Hospital. 
However, after allegedly ranting to staff about the Antarctic, UFOs, and an underground Nazi city, Forrestal was denied all visitors. Shortly after, he mysteriously died in a fall from his hospital room window. What did Forrestal know? Were his perceived delusional rants based upon reality? According to the legend of the German Vril Society, a secret remote viewing was held in 1919 at an old hunting lodge near Brechtsgaden. During this event, Maria Arsic, a self-proclaimed medium, presented her supposed telepathic messages, which she claimed to have received from an extraterrestrial civilization existing in the constellation of Taurus. It is reported that these messages contained instructions for building a circular flight machine. It is interesting to note that German Oriental scholars and occultists alike regarded such mystic teachings with complete seriousness, with well-documented, well-funded, diligent efforts put forth to discover and such individually proclaimed powers and their messages therein into viable technological realities. What happened in the Antarctic? Who were these people from other worlds that von Braun and Oberth spoke of? Did the Third Reich make contact with an alien or possible highly advanced once ancient civilization, allowing them to engineer mystifying technologies? We find such claims, rumors, and fragments of evidence to support such possible realities highly compelling. An ancient clay tablet buried away in the bowels of a British museum, has been quietly baffling historians for over 150 years. This cuneiform tablet has been long housed in the British Museum's archives under collection article number K8538, however, now known as a planisphere, it has nonetheless revealed a fascinating translation telling of an incredible story. One which described of an ancient comet impact with our own planet. Recovered in the 19th century, unearthed from the ancient library of King Azurbanipal in Nineveh, Iraq, by Sir Henry Laird. After feverish research, specialists found that 50% of the clay tablet intricately referred to the position of the planets and weather conditions. Yet in addition, the other half of the tablet described how a massive object, large enough to be observed as it was still in space, was tracked as the inscriber witnessed it approaching and subsequently impacting with Earth. Museum curators explain, the Sumerian astronomer, it would seem, decided the event was of such great importance, he made tremendous effort to pinpoint its location in the sky making an accurate note of the object's trajectory relative to the stars. Incredibly, from this remarkable skill, they claim they were able to pinpoint the precise comet, and it turns out that the object observed by the Sumerian astronomer was the asteroid that impacted Kerfels, Austria. We find this astute research, the possibly successful complete decipherment of the tablet, not to mention its ability to allow us to listen to a witness story of an event thousands of years ago, is indeed incredibly fascinating. Has ancient alien technology finally been discovered within Russia? According to several talented UFO enthusiasts, along with a number of scientists, that is exactly what has happened. A team from Princeton University in America and the University of Florence in Italy have discovered a quote, quasi-crystal, so named because of its unorthodox arrangement of atoms, found within a meteorite from a remote region of northeastern Russia. This crystal, long thought impossible to be formed naturally due to being too energetically unstable and atomically manipulated. When the team discovered that the meteorite contained this mysterious, ancient, intelligently designed material, they merely moved the goalposts, simply stating that it can indeed be formed naturally. Technically, scientists describe quasi-crystals as quasi-periodic, being manually ordered, no longer found on the periodic table. Although they exhibit a pattern that fills all available mass continuously, they lack what scientists and mathematicians term translational symmetry. Simply put, they are not naturally occurring materials. 
The meteorite in which it was found is believed to be around 4.5 billion years old. Yet alas, when it picked up this perplexing and possibly alien passenger may remain unknown. UFO enthusiasts and scientists alike have previously hypothesized that evidence for alien life would, in all possibility, be found in a form such as this. Pointing out that quasi-crystals, being a novel form of matter, should actually be seen as artifacts of alien artificially created technology. No one has ever been able to explain how quasi-crystals can be formed by natural processes, and no one is ever likely to. It just does not happen. Their forbidden symmetry, making them impossible to be formed naturally. The only other known quasi-crystals, besides those found in the Chukotka meteorites, were only recently synthesized within laboratory conditions by scientists. Being very hard, with low friction characteristics, also a low heat conduction, quasi-crystals are a very useful product, used in a wide range of high-speed technologies, such as the coatings of airplanes and stealth fighters. Two-time Nobel Prize winner Linus Pauling, the idol of the American Chemical Society and one of the most famous scientists in the world, argued till his last days against quasi-periosity in Crystal's mere existence. He didn't even believe we would ever manage to create it. Does this sound like a naturally occurring material to you? How did this complex material end up on and within an ancient meteorite? Did this lump of space debris once collide with an alien craft, somewhere out there in deep space? It seems, regardless of what certain scientific bodies would have you presume, that is indeed the most likely scenario.